Hi everybody and welcome to Vanessa's Van Life Journey. I am here today to show you guys how I built my wardrobe shelf cabinet for van life. So I decided to go with a pretty long uh, floor to ceiling wall configuration for my Ford E350 cargo van. So first of all, I am going to suggest that you get a thicker piece of wood uh it's up to you how thick you go consider the weight uh but something that's going to be thick enough that you can nail through with a nail gun and if you're like me and you're an amateur you, you want something with some thick wood so the second thing i did was to build me a scriber uh so i took uh one of those curtain rods the adjustable curtain rods and I took a pencil from Home Depot. I taped them together and the curtain rod part you want to touch the wall, the pencil you want to touch the paper or not paper but uh, your plywood and you're just going to go up, start from the bottom and go up to the top of the wall, take your time and that is scribing the shape of your wall. I also will suggest if you can get some with something with a pointed end that's going to touch the wall, that will get you closer to the wood and give you a better result. After that, take it and go cut it with a jigsaw and voila. Now this was my first piece of wood that I scribed and it was not perfect. I was absolutely positively happy with it though. The results to me were wonderful because it got me closer to the wall. And with that experience, I scribed my second wall and went and did the same thing. I would suggest that once you uh, scribe your wood, place or before you scribe it it's up against the wall draw a line on each side just so you'll know what place you scribe that for so it can fit perfectly into that place and you'll always know where to place it back even when your shelf is completely built so i went ahead and did that for all three parts and now I'm going to take my basket. I think I have one more piece to go, but now I'm going to take my baskets or containers or whatever it is you're going to use and dry fit it to each section so I can see how far apart I want these walls. By the way, this is one sheet of plywood that I had Home Depot cut. They, uh, My shelves that are gonna go into this is 16 inches wide. I had them cut these pieces to 23 inches wide because I wanted to leave enough room for them to, you know, for me to scribe it off. Uh, but I actually should have had them cut this to like 18 or 19. That way I could have got another board out of it. Uh, but I'm right now, I'm just dry fitting my containers to see how far apart I want my boards. And that will determine where I'm going to or how wide my shelves are going to be. And also, the sheet of plywood was just tall enough for these shelves. Uh, if you're going to make these exact shelves that I am making, before you have them cut your sections, into whatever width you want them have them take off about an inch of the lengthwise so that way you won't have to cut it down yourself because i did add a thinner piece of plywood on the top and on the bottom to give it stability and i did have to take about an inch off of uh each one of these boards in order for me to achieve that and still come up with the height that I came up with. So uh, now I'm taking also if you're working alone and even if you're not working alone, you want to add something behind each board. So that way when you scribe your walls right here, I'm going and I'm numbering each one of my boards. Uh, so I'll know which one it was and exactly where they go before I start mixing things up. But you wanna make sure that you are putting something behind each one of your boards as you scribe them so that way it won't move and again mark the wall on both sides so that way you'll know exactly where 
that particular board goes back. So now I am getting ready to scribe the last piece of wood, which is the one that's going to be behind my seat. Um, I had to move the other board out of the way in order to do that. And also I stuffed a pillow behind the piece of wood so that way it won't be flopping and going back and forth. And that way I can, you know, get a better result from me scribing. Again, you're going to be able to see here better how to hold my scriber that I made up against the wall so you can get a better idea on how to scribe, how to create your own scriber, and it's not that complicated. You guys, if you want to do a van bill, do not be intimidated by the process. Just take it day by day, step by step. This took me over a week to build. Uh, you know, I had to take some time in between me painting, letting the paint dry. Take your time, you guys watch some videos if you have to watch some videos ask somebody some questions if you have a family member that knows how to construct stuff uh, I do have a cousin that is in construction and so it took me longer because I had to wait on him some days to come and look at it when he got off of work and give me my next tip so take your time don't get frustrated you're saving money by doing it yourself and you're gaining knowledge so i scribed that out cut that and as you can see the scribing was getting better and the next time i have a project like this i am confident that i would do a better job than i did on this uh so the next thing i'm going to do is i am also taking other containers that i'm using and i'm dry fitting them for the area i'm also measuring from the wall to the container to see how much i'm going to have to take off the front of these since i did uh leave some excess on there so i decided to take four inches off of each board but if you get home depot to cut these down to the right size to begin with then you won't have to take anything off i almost started to leave uh, those four inches on but I wanted more room in my floor space to be able to walk and uh, for my bed area at night so I actually uh, I actually uh, cut it down and now I'm cutting the piece of wood that's gonna go at the bottom and then I'm gonna scribe that out uh, the plywood on the top and the bottom is thinner uh, then the plywood on the side if you're gonna use the same thickness then you're gonna want to take off a little bit more off of the top and the bottom to account for that so it could fit in there uh, just right or if you just want to make it perfect where it just tight 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 then you can do that so pretty much I am got my shelves got my walls configuring my shelves in there and we're going, we're getting ready to go. Uh, so what am I doing now? I'm getting ready to add some shells on the piece that is on the farther end by the seat. Also to let you know, when I got ready to uh, measure out my shelves and see how far apart I was going to make them. I added boards on top of the thing that I was measuring it for. You can see right here, I added boards on the top of it uh, to make it higher. So that way, when once I completed my shelf, uh, I had enough space between the shelf and the item where I could pull it out with ease. I didn't want it to be exact mundo. I wanted it to be a little taller so I did add boards uh, in order to be able to compensate for that now here I'm marking out the top of my wood my wood that I'm gonna have on the top is longer so I marked it out and cut it down uh, and also cut off the edge so it could fit perfectly now I'm going to lay my shelf down after I've made it sturdy with all of the uh, shelves in between, I'm going to lay it down so that way I can attach the top part 
and the bottom part this was actually a lot of work because i had to physically lay it down i had to prop it up on one end and then i had to nail that top on and especially when i got ready to do the bottom part i had to prop it up so i can get behind it and nailed it and then the next day after i completed that I decided to take my scrap wood. I saved all my scrap wood, you guys. You don't know like at what point in the project you're gonna need. And I filled in that gap between the shelf and the ceiling. And then I nailed it with the nail gun up from the bottom and just made that a snugger, snugger, snugger fit. I do not have any brackets on this shelf that's holding it in, it's keeping it from moving. Uh, I'm going to add some in the future, but at this point, this shelf is not moving because I've made it snug to the ceiling uh, by adding that brace up at the top and also uh, adding my face covering to it and nailing that to that and it's not moving uh but i am for security reasons and just for my peace of mind in the future i am going to add some l brackets so i also had to make a, another trip to home depot to buy some birch wood which is going to be the face and i also bought paint which is going to be the face of my wardrobe cabinet slash shelf uh to keep my clothes in so you can use the cheapest wood to assemble the shelf and then if you like you can buy the birch wood for your face of it and if you want to use all cheap wood then it's totally up to you just know you're going to have more texture once you paint it the birch wood makes you have a more professional finish uh, so here I am loading up the van. Take advantage of uh, Home Depot cutting the wood down for you. If your Home Depot uh, has a limit to the number of cuts that they make, just let them know, hey, I'm working on my van. I'm going to be living in my van. I'm building some cabinets or shelves to uh, put in my van and I don't have a saw and it would really help me out a lot if you can cut this for me. That's what I did. The gentleman, you know, they said that they make up to five cuts. One place told me they make up to two cuts. I think it's on an individual basis, depending on the person that's assisting you. That's why if you let them know what you're doing and let them know, hey, I don't have a saw. I'm trying to do this DIY project on my van. I'm living out of my van they will help you and if you could give them a tip give them a tip i actually didn't tip the people that helped me that cut this for me but you know it, i appreciated them so much i didn't tip them maybe i should have i usually tip but i didn't just i didn't think to tip the people in the store that's cutting the wood for you but if you're going to be frequenting the same store and you know you're going to need stuff cut all the time i do suggest that you give them a five or ten dollar tip because it really helped you so this is the next the same night because i was working at night you guys i was at my cousin's house i had everything laid out so i was working at night so i just took the face the face and the styles the face at the top i had them cut that six inches wide and the side i had them cut those two inches wide i wish i would have had them cut the sides four inches wide but i had them cut it um two inches wide and again on that it's to your preference it's to your preference if you want it's six inches wide if you want it eight inches wide it's totally totally up to you um i'm just giving you an idea of what i did and if you want to follow my video step by step and have more intensive instructions 
I have videos on the channel already to start you off with watching the process from beginning to end and I have more videos to come so make sure you subscribe to the channel make sure you turn on the notification bell hit always when you turn on notification bell so when I upload another video you will be notified here I'm taking the end part and I sanded the inner and outer part of each board because uh, you know Home Depot cut it so I wanted to make sure I got all the splendor and everything off so I did sand that and then I also got some wood glue filler and I filled in all of my nail holes and I let that dry for 24 hours after I filled in my nail holes the next and let it dry then I came back the next day and I sanded it down now keep in mind when you're filling in your nail holes the more uh, wood filler you put on there the more you're sanding you're gonna have to do so I did it with my finger I kind of don't suggest that because it leaves more wood filler on there you want to make sure after you fill it before it dries to scrape as much of it off with a scraper as you can and here I am just sanding and also make sure you get a thicker grit sand paper uh, this was a harder job for me because the sandpaper that I got initially was not a thicker grit of sandpaper. So I did go back and get a thicker grit, grit of sandpaper for the other thing that I'm going to build in the back. But just make sure that you are considering all of this stuff and, and watching videos like this. When you see something that you like, watch it all the way through, watch it a couple of times over to learn from other people's mistakes uh, because that's how we learn. We learn from making mistakes. Now I've learned to the next time when I do this, I'm going to get a better result and a better project, uh, product out of it. After I sanded everything, I wiped it off with a dry towel. I wiped all the dust off with a dry towel. And then after I got the dust off, I swept up all the dust. And then I went ahead and wiped it down again with a damp towel. And I did let some time pass after wiping it down with the damp towel before I painted. Uh, I think... I was tired that night and so I just waited to the next uh, or maybe I did decide to paint that night I'm not sure you guys because I was anxious I, I know I painted at nighttime so I think I did paint that night I painted at nighttime I suggest if you're gonna paint at night that you have very 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 good lighting because I missed a lot of spots and missing spots is going to make your dry time longer because the next day you're gonna have to come back touch it up and wait again for it to dry so if you're like me and you're impatient do it right the first time so that way you won't have to go back over it uh, I did not add any primer to this um, if you use primer then that means the less paint you're gonna use I ended up using a whole gallon of paint for this cabinet to paint the inside and to paint the wall um, just so everything could look professional if you don't want to paint the inside of your cabinet then you're probably just gonna need a little quart just to paint the uh just to paint the face but if you want to paint the inside so when you open it up it could look professional then it took me a gallon uh and i did two coats on here and i also had to go back and get another gallon of paint for the other thing that i have to paint over there so take your time have good lighting let your piece dry in between coats and how I did it was I painted one section at a time and by the time I made it all the way through the whole thing then the other end was dry and I went back and I did my section so here I think I waited two or three days and to let it dry and now I'm putting in and filling in uh, my shelf with my little bins that I think look so cute. I actually would like some bins like this, but in a different color. So I might be upgrading my bins later, but it really don't matter because it's in the inside and these bins were free because somebody gave them to me. So after I did all that, then I took this, 
I don't know what you call it. It's white. It's kind of flimsy. It's the stuff that they use in the bathrooms on the wall. Um, I took that and I cut it and I put it in each section. So each section has two pieces of it. Here you see I'm measuring it out and I just took some plywood um, and put it on the ground, put some two by fours on top of that. And in between the two by fours, I can run my saw through without uh, hitting the saw on the ground so if you don't have any saw horses uh this is a good way to cut this uh if you also want to use thin the thin thin plywood you can use that as well it will give you a little bit firmer grip so uh but this is what i use i actually like the contrast of the white and the uh gray and on the inside, I also have some railings that I added. I don't know what happened to it, y'all, but that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to thumbs up this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Let me know if this video was helpful. Let me know if you like uh, my wardrobe closet for my van life. And don't forget to come back for another video. And if you want more details on how I built this wardrobe slash closet, I have longer videos with more details on the channel. So make sure you watch that. Talk to you guys.